Hi everybody, how's it going? I uh, just want to make a quick video here, or try to. Uh, stuff I picked up at a thrift store in town, the hospice thrift store. They don't usually have a whole lot of vinyl. They've definitely downsized their uh, their vinyl selection. Um, but I uh, had an interesting uh, experience uh, last week. I uh, went into the store and uh, I was kind of digging through their vinyl. I saw there was a bunch of 78s. And uh, nothing really that special in the, the single 78s, but... There were a couple of really cool things in there. Uh, one was this uh, Bugs Bunny set here, 378s, um, put out by Capital. So it's Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Porky Pig, Elmer Fudd, and Warner Brothers, Looney Tunes, and Merry Melodies. So you've got the voices, of course, by Mel Blanc, and uh, music by Mil Billy May. And uh, it's actually in really nice shape. A lot of times I see these and they're just really, really beat to hell. Um, got a little bit of artwork on the inside here. I'll try to be careful doing this. So that was pretty cool. I was pretty excited about that. That was a dollar and then uh, uh, only charged me a dollar for the whole set. And then I found this uh, another one, a single 78. But it's uh, Walt Disney. It's Capitol Records again. But it's Walt Disney's Little Toot. Story of a little, uh, little tugboat that becomes a hero. Um, Kind of cool. It's uh, Walt Disney's from Walt Disney's Melody Time, but uh, on the back you can see a little bit of advertising for uh, we got Uncle Remus, Tales of Br'er Rabbit, and all that, and uh, Mickey and the Beanstalk is the other one. So that's kind of cool. Uh, nice find from my wife's Disney collection. And they've got some uh, artwork from the story on the inside. This one's uh, quite a bit rougher, but. Still cool for a dollar. And so as I was going up to the front counter to pay for these, uh, I was pretty excited about that. And then I saw they had uh, like two big rolling carts filled with records. Um, kind of rough looking records, but I was like, whoa, what the heck? And I uh, decided to flip through them and see what was there. Um, and it looked like what it was. It was uh, somebody's collection. It was all from the same collection. I guess an older guy. Most of these records are probably from the late 50s to maybe mid to late 70s I'd say and uh, looks like he was in the jazz and country especially didn't really pick up any country records except for maybe like a Chet Atkins record um, but I picked up some interesting jazz stuff now they were all looks like they've been in storage for a while and not really much in the way of water damage but looks like there were some cockroaches that got in and uh, looks like the records probably got stuck to the boxes to the bottom of the boxes or something and so there's some edge damage on a lot of these, and a lot of them, there was some minimal kind of cockroach uh, damage or the, you know, just cockroach gunk I had to clean up carefully with uh, an X-Acto knife and a lot of uh, Clorox wipes, things like that. But some interesting stuff. Uh, Sonny Stitt, sax player here. This is on, uh, on Roulette. The Matadors Meet the Bull, featuring Sonny Stitt. Recognized a lot of the names on here. Uh, Eddie Lockjaw Davis, Junior Mance, J.J. Johnson, Wild Bill Davis on organ. Joe Newman, Ray Barreto, uh, Tito Puente, Clark Terry, Barry Galbraith, Milt Hinton. A lot of great players on this, so I figured I'd just take a chance on that. Um, on Atlantic, I recognize this guy's name, but I couldn't remember why. This is Bobby Scott, the complete musician. He looks pretty creepy in that photo if you ask me but, um, but I recognize his name he did some albums on the uh, the Bethlehem label it was like the uh, the compositions of Bobby Scott so he's a composer but I guess he also plays piano and he sings on this and he conducted the uh, the uh, musicians whatever um, early Atlantic this one's actually in really nice shape I didn't really see any cockroach damage on this one Got the original inner sleeve, which is always nice. Especially it's this one's just in beautiful shape. Usually when I find these old Atlantics, they've got something, something not original in the inside. There's the vinyl in that. So that's cool. Kind of uh, some vocal jazz is what it is. And then another old Atlantic. This is uh, Bix. 
mean big spider back uh, Duke and fats um, Duke Ellington fats uh, ah can I think of whatever anyway uh, interpreted by Thomas Talbert uh, another early Atlantic so looks like he's uh, arrangements are by Thomas Talbert who also conducted um, few just a few jazz musicians I recognize on this one but again it's early Atlantic it's got a, a sound of Philadelphia inner sleeve which is correct obviously but this one's on the older Atlantic uh, black and silver label that's pretty cool um, I figure I'd give it a shot these are all a dollar a piece um, Don Ellis shock treatment kind of another jazz uh, conductor arranger I don't know who wrote most of these songs on here, but kind of a kind of experimental big band sound, I think, on Columbia. Give that a shot. Uh, he had a lot of older jazz stuff. This one, um, older recordings of Django Reinhardt, the guitarist, and the band of the Hot Club of France. Um, these recordings have been reissued a zillion times, but this one was in really nice shape. The the jacket and everything and the record. Um, that's on Columbia, on uh, Capitol, on this uh, Dimensions in Jazz label. I guess they reissued a lot of stuff. Uh, so kind of interesting. I didn't have any uh, Django Reinhardt in the collection. I like jazz guitars quite a bit. And then this one is uh, a modern interpretation of the hit Broadway musical Do Re Mi. This is one by uh, June Christie, the singer. And Bob Cooper, a uh, sax player, the leader, he plays bass, clarinet, and tenor sax. But, um, let's see, this one's like Capital, Capital Stereo, but there's a lot of great uh, jazz players on here, West Coast jazz players. Uh, seem to be finding nothing but West Coast stuff for the most part. Uh, but Bob Cooper, Buddy Colette on bass, clarinet, tenor sax as well. Um... Monty Budwig and Buddy Clark on bass, Al Viola on guitar, Bud Shank on alto flute, what? Shelly Mann on drums, um, Conte Candoli on trumpet, Pete Jolly on piano, Mel Lewis on drums, Joe Mondragon on bass. So a lot of really good players on that. Um, kind of in the same, well, a similar vein. This is uh, Liberty. It's Bobby. And Nevildson, Smorgasbord. Um, this one's got Howard Roberts on guitar. Um, Marty Page, Page on piano, accordion, and organ. Red Mitchell on bass and piano, it says. And Don Heath on drums. Um, yeah, I figured I'd give it a shot. It's from the Jazz Unlimited series, it says. And it comes in this nice... Nice thick vinyl on this cool old Liberty label. And then there were some uh, interesting compilations. Uh, I picked up three of these. They're on the Smithsonian Collection series. You can kind of see there in the corner. And these were put out by either Columbia or RCA. Um, seems like they were both contracted to put these out. Uh, this is one, Fletcher Henderson, Developing the American Orchestra, 1923 to 37. So just kind of profiling some of the, the big band uh, leaders. Nice gatefold here with a lot of uh, information on the inside. And uh, it's like actually multiple pages of information. So really, you know, a lot of uh, discographical information here. A lot of nice photos and stuff. Two LPs. So that's cool. Uh, another one like that, uh, Henry Red Allen and Coleman Hawkins. And then uh, Duke Ellington, 1940. I think they put out two or three Duke Ellington ones uh, for different years. This one was put out by RCA. Uh, I think the other ones were put out by Columbia. And then the guy also had uh, a series of uh, kind of like jazz bootlegs. They're radio recordings that were kind of collected and put out by uh, a couple different labels. Uh, first of all, Radiola. Radiola out of I think New Jersey they put out a lot of old like radio uh, radio shows 
uh, dramas, things like that, but also collected jazz recordings. So this one is uh, radio band remotes. So when they recorded something remote, like they send the crew out to record something at a hotel or something. That's what these are. That's what the remote is. And so you get some recordings like Tommy Dorsey and his orchestra, September 19, 14th, 1939. Um, Glenn Miller, Will Bradley, Count Basie, Cap Calloway, and I thought one that was interesting in here, see if I can find it. Uh, there was one where it notes, okay, Cap Calloway and his orchestra, August 14th, 1945, from the New Zanzibar, New York City. Program is interrupted for news bulletins announcing the surrender of Japan and the end of World War II. So I thought that was pretty cool. That's actually in the recording, that interruption. And this one, uh, the second Timex All-Star Jazz Show. I guess that was a radio show uh, put out by Timex, the watchmaker, sponsored by Timex. You can actually hear some of the advertisements in here, but you've got uh, the Dukes of Dixieland, Lionel Hampton's Orchestra, Louis Armstrong's All-Stars, uh, George Shearing's Quintet, um, something that says J.P. Morgan with Gene Krupa, Lionel Hampton, Buddy Weed Piano, uh, Jack Tea Garden Band, and uh, one track by the Jelly, uh, Jerry Mulligan Quartet. They squeezed in some modern jazz on this one. This is from 1958. It is a CBS, it's a CBS TV broadcast. That's kind of interesting. And uh, this one, the winners. Um, it says limited edition for collectors only. You know what that means. Um, but you've got uh, Count Basie, Billy Holiday, Duke Ellington, Art Tatum, and Louis Armstrong. Uh, different live recordings here from looks like the 1949 to 1954 different times. Uh, in a similar vein, but on a bigger label, this one on Mainstream Records. It's Commodore Jazz Classics Original Recording Series. This is Town Hall Concert Volume 2. So this is from a concert in 1945. And this features uh, Gene Krupa, um, Teddy Wilson, Teddy Wilson, um, Red Norvo's band, a couple tracks by Red Norvo's band. Interesting compilation here. Some of the musicians, Gene Krupa, Charlie Ventura, Shorty Rogers, Red Norvo, Teddy Wilson, Billy Taylor, Slam Stewart, and Stuff Smith, a uh, jazz violin player. And there's the... Uh, Show you the mainstream records label. Kind of interesting. Okay. And uh, another compilation here. This one on Prestige, which is pretty cool to find. Never seen this before. The Jazz Trumpet. This is Volume One. Classic Jazz to Swing. So you've got some of the uh, older jazz trumpeters here. Of course, Louis Armstrong, uh, King Oliver, Louis. Uh, I see Bunk Johnson, Big Spiderbeck, uh, Red Nichols, Bunny Berrigan, Henry Red Allen, uh, Cootie Williams, Buck Clayton, Jonah Jones, several. This is uh, kind of a later. It's obviously missing the original inner sleeves they've got in the plastic sleeve here, but uh, I'm a later uh, prestige label here. And uh, this is kind of cool. This is on the Good Time Jazz label, which was uh, part of uh, Contemporary Records out of Los Angeles. But they reissued a lot of uh, kind of Dixieland type jazz. So this is the Jazz Band Ball um, for historic recording sessions by Turk Murphy's Jazz Band, Kid Ory's Creole Jazz Band, George Lewis and his New Orleans Music, and Pete Daly's Rhythm Kings. So uh, kind of a nice historical document here, some Dixieland jazz, if I can squeeze this out. And uh, got a real distinctive, kind of old time looking label there. But these things are be being put out. Uh, I've seen some 78s, so probably from the, I guess, mid 40s to the early 60s when uh, Good Time Jazz was active. Um, and some more kind of Dixieland. This one, Pee Wee Irwin's Dixie Strutters. 
on United Artists down by the riverside and uh, saw some musicians in here I recognized uh, Milt Hinton on bass, uh, O.C. Johnson on drums, Lou McGarity on trombone, and uh, Dick Hyman on piano and organ. Uh, excuse me. And uh, some import stuff that was in his collection. Um, Phillips on the Phillips label, the Dutch Phillips label. Um, Bunny Berrigan and his boys. Bunny Berrigan, I guess, uh, band leader, also trumpet player. Um, kind of interesting. It's on that kind of a very slick, laminated, European style thing. This one's really dirty. It needs a nice cleaning, but you got the Phillips Micro Groove label. I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, another one on uh, MGM. And this one's printed in Germany. Must be a German issue. George Shearing. Now you're hearing the best of George Shearing. The uh, blind uh, piano player, jazz piano player, the George Shearing Quintet on MGM. And. There's that MGM label, and they've got the uh, the little rights organization. I'm not sure what that stands for, but anytime you see B I E M, that's usually German. Or I think it's always German. Um, Jonah Jones on trumpet. I've seen a lot of Jonah Jones stuff before. I think he's much more kind of mainstream commercial, but this one's interesting. So you've got uh. Vic Dickinson on trombone, Pete Brown on alto sax, Milt Hinton on bass, and Cozy Cole on drums. So kind of a different uh, different group of musicians here. And this is on the Bayonet, or Baronet, Baronet label. I've never heard of that one before. Um, so a little different for Jonah Jones. I figured I'd give it a shot. And uh, this one's just kind of junky, but uh, I like these Crown records. Crown here. And uh, this one is uh, stereo. It's uh, the Latin Touch. Dave Bacall playing uh, organ here. Of course, there's some Latin percussion and stuff, but it's on, uh, it's on that cool Crown uh, red vinyl, and it's actually not too beat up. Usually these things are pretty well trashed. Crown's not really known, I don't think, for their high quality pressings. Most of the ones I've seen are really dodgy, especially the, the black vinyl. I don't know about the red vinyl, but most of them are pretty pretty crappy. And then I uh, picked this one up. It just looked interesting. It's on the Atco label, uh, division of uh, Atlantic. This is Paulo Alencar and his Brazilian All-Stars. Play jazz with a new beat, Jazz Nova. I uh, didn't really know anything about it. Just kind of looked it up on Discogs, and it's going for I don't know about 20 bucks. So I figured it couldn't be total garbage. So decided to give it a shot. Um, but it's got the nice Atco original inner sleeve here, advertising the uh, current Atco releases. Isn't that cool? Cool Atco, early Atco label. So I guess that's some sort of Bossa Nova jazz. Uh, another one, early Atlantic, Mac Cack in his French rock and roll. Don't know anything about this, but it looked interesting. Um, Atlantic 8012. I guess it's somewhere kind of a mix between early rock and roll and jazz, but on the old Atlantic black and silver label. Just got a few more here. I'm going to try to knock it out real quick. My camera's about to run out of space. Dick Shorey on tour. He had kind of a, a percussion-based, I guess, uh, group. He recorded some stuff for Living Stereo for uh, RCA. And they're actually on tour here. I guess it's a live recording featuring uh, Joe Morello on drums from uh, Dave Brubeck's band. So that's kind of cool. And... Uh, so Martin Denny, A Taste of Honey, uh, nothing real special, but I'm just trying to build up my Martin Denny collection. This one was in nice shape. And then uh, finally, this one's pretty cool. It's uh, Arthur Lyman at the Crescendo, and it's on the GNP Crescendo label, G Norman Presents. 
and um, supposedly recorded live, but they took out the crowd noise to kind of preserve the uh, the feel of the, the show. You can see it's on the GNP Crescendo label. So some nice, uh, nice old uh, Exotica type records. So that's it, kind of an eclectic haul, uh, but some nice historical type things. I'll be able to kind of listen and read up on some of the old guys like Duke Ellington and Bunny Berrigan and Fletcher uh, Henderson, all that stuff. So it's kind of an interesting haul, uh, something I didn't really expect. Um, it's kind of neat when you get that situation like that. Uh, here's a couple more real quick, just some junky ones. Uh, this looks nice on camera, but it's actually in, in really rough shape. The uh, the sleeve here is totally come apart, but just kind of a placeholder for now. Dave Brubeck's time out. Um, the vinyl is actually in pretty nice shape. Nice, uh, not really nice shape, but it's not totally trashed on Columbia 6i. And then uh, this one, I didn't expect much, and it's not much, but it's uh, the Mariachi Brass featuring Chet Baker, A Taste of Tequila. On the World Pacific label. So you can see there you got Chet Baker kind of taking advantage of his fame I guess trying to do a uh, like Tijuana Brass kind of record here. Um, yeah it's nothing special but you know give it a shot for a dollar. So that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I'll shoot uh, at least one more video today so I'll see you on the next one. Bye.